Connecting the dots. Connecting his guests to the world. Creating more connections. Welcome to The Connection with your host, Jay Morales. Podcasting from the Parkville Studios. Good afternoon. The purpose of The Connection is to tell stories, connect people, connect their wives, connect them to the world. And we are with the Blackstone Series. We've been doing this uh, Blackstone District Series for about two weeks now. And it's a four-week series. Thank you for joining us. I'm so excited for my next guest, and I'm always excited when there is alcohol available. Tony Thomas from the Farnham House Brewing Company. Tony, how are you, buddy? Good. How's yes. everybody doing? Yes. I'm doing good, actually. I'm doing great. How could you do bad when you have beer at your feet? So, so many stories to get through. I want to say thank you to our sponsor real quick. Our sponsor is Sternella. Located in the historic Blackstone District, Sternella is a hybrid of bistro and gastropub that serves refined comfort food with global influences. Our seasonal menu is inspired by local ingredients provided to us by our purveyors. We offer domestic and international varieties of wine, craft beer, and sophisticated cocktails featuring house and few spirits. Thank you so much to Sternella for their sponsorship. Tony Thomas from the Farnham House Brewing Company. Tony, so I want to jump right into it. How long have you guys been in your operation? How long has Farnham House been around in the Blackstone District? Yeah, we actually just celebrated our fifth anniversary on the 30th of June. Man, there's a lot of anniversaries going five years. Okay, so take me back to when you said to your friends, your co-owner, right? Yeah. How many partners are there? There's four of us total, uh, two oh. couples. Okay, four, four total, two couples. So husband, wife, on this husband, wife. Exactly. We know who the bosses are. <laughs> Let's be honest. Pretty much. <laughs> Sorry to call you out there. So let me ask you this. You said, somebody said, let's open a brewery in Blackstone. Who said it first? You know, we had actually been looking for buildings for over a year. Okay. And we got really lucky when the uh, space just a couple do doors down from the Crescent Moon came open. And I had actually looked at that space four years prior. So what made you even get want to get into craft brewery? I mean into brew into the brewery well long story short uh i, I wrote a long story <laughs> short just say it i wrote a business plan to open a brew pub as my senior thesis i was a marketing major um instead of a thesis we had to write a business plan what high school did you go to this was at, at briar cliff college in Sioux oh City, okay Iowa. college yeah. okay so you're yes. writing a thesis about a brewery yep did you get a good grade in it uh, I was given 100% with a yes. note on the side that said, you should do this. <laughs> do you still talk to your professor now that uh, held that class? I've been in touch loosely, but not a lot. You uh, need to get that person, whoever that is, a sample. I really do. You, you better? It's yeah. Okay, keep going. Tell me, so you, this is your thesis. You said, this is what I'm going to do. Yeah, so I actually was sitting on a business, international business degree, and needed to make some money, so I actually went into international shipping for about seven years before making before the jump to professional brewing. Okay, so um, you did seven years in the corporate America, Correct. and you were paying your dues. So you say one day to your coworkers, I'm out of this, mother. I'm out of here. That's pretty much how it went. I'm going, <laughs> I'm going to brewing school. Peace what out. They, what do they say? <laughs> do, do they doubt you? Uh, no, I think they all knew that I was already well on my way into the, I'd been homebrewing for that seven years as well. So what started homebrewing for you? What, how did you even get into that? Right after graduating college, I of moved course. out to Denver, <laughs> the mecca of craft beer. Yes. And a whole new world was open to me when I went to the bar and saw all these different kinds of beer. And then I met someone who was already a home brewer and said, yeah, you can do this yourself at home. And that opened a whole new world to me. Got started doing that. That whole world of brewing, underground per se, or home brewing, is pretty popular right now. What do you think is fueling the whole craft beer, home brewing movement? It's essentially history repeating itself. Uh, people are going away from these lagers that have been mass produced and have been popular for a long time and getting back to neighborhood pubs that make beer for the neighborhood 
and you obviously see it being distributed as well, but it's back to flavors and styles that had not been around. I think what's years. most important is people are starting to support crafters or artists or people like yourself, you know, people like Script Town as well, you know, who are saying, we want the real authentic stuff. We're tired of the mass produced monsters. And when they spend money with you guys, they're spending money locally. I agree. Yeah, people are definitely getting back towards uh, local products, neighborhood products. I mean, your two mile radius is your most important customers, probably. Yeah, no doubt. So let me ask you this: two years, uh, five years into the business, um, what did, what did, what surprised you the most in this last five years? What are you like? Oh man, I didn't even think about this. How fast growth would happen in the craft beer segment? Yes. And more and more of us are popping up, so... It's getting crowded? It's getting quite competitive. Okay, competitive, yeah. okay. So John said earlier, you know, from Script Town, he said 2,000 brewers years ago, and there are almost 6,000 breweries now across the United States, um, microbreweries especially. Can I ask you, what makes you so different besides your product? Besides our product? I know, right? I just stumped you right there. Boom. <laughs> a little bit. Um, so we do have a restaurant that, that uh, along with the brewery, in okay. which they're also trying to do locally uh, sourced foods in all the things that they make in the kitchen. Um, so that is a little bit unique in itself and kind of marries with what we're trying to do in the brewery. So you're staying out of the lane of food as well. You're just saying, I'm gonna do great at this, but you have a restaurant attached. We have a restaurant, we own the restaurant, okay, but we've okay. hired chefs that- Really are, know what they're doing. Yes. Most famous item on the menu, what is it? The burger, we sell a lot of burgers, <laughs> locally sourced beef. I have, so do, do you wanna uh, shout out to any of your partners or your vendors or people that, uh, help provide you products? Yeah, um, so my partners include my wife, Christina, who yes. cooks the books for us. <laughs> I love uh, cooks the books. <laughs> She's a smart one, let's be honest, right? And the uh, wives are usually the smarter ones. Yeah, Phil and Bernie Dorr are the other two. Phil's uh, my partner in the brewery, and his wife, Bernie, helps kind of oversee the kitchen and day-to-day uh, -day operations. Who are some of the people that uh, you spend money with like your vendors or your suppliers locally yeah, some of those guys include john's naturals uh plum creek farms plum creek is one that i've heard of tell me about your relationship with plum creek what do they provide for you plum creek provides chicken for us uh, and we do a lot of wings as well no doubt yeah <laughs> the, the whole wings um so they're when you get an order it's the big ones so let me ask you this Marsha or Lisa or David is listening right now to this podcast. They've never been to Farnham House Brewery. You know what I'm saying? They've just not been there. Invite them there and why should they come there? Come try some of these delicious craft beers that we're making and marry, pair it up with some uh, one of these burgers that I'm talking about. They're delectable. It's the best beef that you can get on the market. And if you want an appetizer, these wings are out of this world, you're not gonna find anything else like them in town. We actually have a special blue cheese going on with them right now too. Ooh, that sounds good. Where's the blue cheese from? Is that from somewhere special too, or is that just one of your vendors? That's one of our vendors. That's awesome. So let me ask you this. When people are, are saying, okay, well, you know, there's other craft breweries just like you. I think sometimes when they say that it's because they're not cultured enough in what craft beer is. Um, do you have a different process from other people or, you know, talk about that, you know, that Where did you get your process from and how did you learn? I said I heard you say craft brewing school mm -hmm. How many hours we're talking hours? We're talking days and weeks and years How long has it took you to perfect some of your best recipes? So the process in general the brewing process is the same however where you can differentiate things is in the recipe itself and that's where the home brewing experiments learn your craft while you're brewing on a very small scale that way when you're ready to make the big jump you already have your recipes pretty much set okay we specialize 
in a bit of a niche um, that most people around this market aren't doing as much, which are Belgian beers. We do a lot of German lagers and sours. Um, sours that make your face go, ooh, like that sours? <laughs> Some of them, I, that's yes. a big deal. So my buddy Will Cummings uh, turned me on to that with a, uh, with a bitter beer, and I was like, what? Or not, so- not bitter, but sour, and it makes your jaws hurt. Some of them can. You can you can get them pretty sour. <laughs> yeah. So what's your favorite beer of all time? You're, you're, you're saying you need to come here and you need to try this. You know, of all time, it depends on the day. Uh, yeah, um, no doubt. <laughs> depends on what brews out first. <laughs> pretty much. Today, uh, I brought one of our newest releases, which is a Belgian-style triple. So we're going to be able to sample that, right? Okay, yes. so I'm going to call Jeanette. Jeanette, if you come over here, Jeanette... Oh, thank you. Jeanette, Jeanette, somebody call Jeanette right there. She's not listening. Jeanette, Jeanette. Yeah, are you ready? Come on down. Come on down. We're going to sample. So Jeanette was not paying attention. So are you, we're not going to take you for long. Have a seat right here. What did I sign up for? No, you just sign up for tasting. We want your real, we want your real take on this. Okay, so put that, uh, put your headset on. All right, so we're going to do a live tasting right now. Jeanette, can you talk right into there? That's mine. That's yours. Sure can. Perfect. Okay. So Jeanette is going to try this. Um, before you sh- talk, will you, will you walk us through this? Yeah. Walk us through this. Introduce yeah. yourselves to each other so Hi. this ain't weird. Jeanette. Tony. Hi. Tony Thomas. Nice to meet you. One of the business partners at Farnham. Okay, at the Farnham House Brewing Company. Okay, so let's talk about this. Tell me about what we're about to sample. Okay, so... I only have one and you have two, by the way. Okay, she's, so it'll be this one, right? So, so how much beer do you, do you consider yourself, Jeanette? Do you like to drink craft beer? Are you a normal, you know, like what? Are you a beer drinker? I, I love all beer. Okay. okay especially good. light beer. Okay. Okay, so walk us through this. Okay, I believe the one we just picked up is the Beer de Garde. Yes. Which we have. Beer de Garde is the style. It's an amber farmhouse ale. Oops, sorry guys. Sorry about that. Sorry about that. Okay. All right. Here we go. So what's the name of it again? Scarlet Rooster is the name. Oh. Scarlet Rooster. And the style is Beer de Garde. Okay, let's try it. Here we go. Jeanette, give us your first impression before he gives us the professional breakdown. I like it. What do you like about it? I really like the name. Scarlet. Scarlet Rooster. Scarlet Rooster. Scarlet Rooster. I love the name, Scarlet Rooster. So, I like that it's not too... It's not too skunky. You know what? It doesn't leave your mouth like, ah. Yeah, so it's made with a French-style Cezanne yeast, which is a farmhouse ale style. And that yeast not only finishes the beer dry, doesn't leave a bunch of uh, sweet malt behind, right? but the yeast also gives off a little bit of a spice character to it that just melds really well with the grains that we use in the, in the beer. You know what I like about it? It's a clean finish. It's a nice, clean finish. I was looking at it, I'm like, oh, this is going to be heavy. What most people don't know is you can't taste a beer with your eyes. Is that right? I mean, people say, I can taste a beer with my eyes. It's dark. I don't want it. It's light. I don't want it. That's not true. If you closed your eyes and did a, a tasting and then opened your eyes and found out what you were drinking, it would probably completely blow your mind. No doubt. No doubt. Okay, what are Jeanette and I going to try here? What's this one? That's yours, Jeanette. That's yours, right? Okay, is that so right? Uh-oh. This one? This one that's amber is... Is that? We have lighter oh. ones. Okay, we, okay, we do so have lighter ones. The lighter ones. one okay. is the triple. Oh, you have a bigger glass than we do. Uh, <laughs> okay, what is this called? To- this is a Belgian-style triple. Now, this Belgian is going to be a little bit bigger of a beer. This is 10% alcohol. Wow! Yeah. I, love, I love bigger alcohol. <laughs> 
it's blonde, which is deceiving, and even when you taste it, you're not going to be able to tell it's 10%, but if you drink a whole glass, you'll definitely be able to tell it's 10%. So this is definitely a more strong beer, because Budweiser is like 5.5, right? Somewhere around there. Somewhere around there. Okay. I might need a whole glass of this. i got to go to a seven-year-old birthday party at 5.30. Oh, yeah, that's There's awesome. more where this came from. Here we go. All right, let's try it. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. Okay, this one. What do you think, Jeanette? Honestly, like that. What contrast to the scarlet? Contrast it. I thought it was lighter than the first one. It's so definitely lighter on the malt, though. Yes, okay. yes. Hold on. So. Mm. But it tastes full, but it's not heavy. My gosh, am I buzzing right now? No, I don't think I am. I don't think I am. Um, popularity of this one, honestly. Sometimes the alcohol level scares people off, but it, it, it is quite popular when we release it as it is only done once a year. Uh, this one is made with the same yeast as the last beer that we tried. So you'll notice that it does get dried out, not very overly malty or sweet again, yet... Like you said, there's some backbone behind it. There's some malt body left behind. So, Jeanette, let me ask you, have you ever been to the Farnham House Brewing Company? No. Okay, so when you think of craft beer and Omaha's landscape, is it something that interests your demographic? Because I'm going to guess, are you millennial? Not quite. Not quite. A little under? A little, a little over? over? So you're a Gen Yes. Okay, so tell me. So when you go out with your friends... Um, craft brewery may not be on the top of your list, right? Just to go I off, mean, but... we're usually wine. Okay, okay. So tell me, would you visit, and don't say yes just to say yes, the Farnham House now or other breweries because of this experience? Yeah. And actually, I think that alcohol content might get more of you there. See, that's the thing, because people think beer is so like, oh, it takes too long. I've heard that so much. But at 10%, uh, that's wine. Won't take you long with this one. <laughs> no doubt. And honestly, um, product produced, mass produced beer makes me full pretty quick. And I've sampled a lot of your, you know, beer and a lot another beer today. I don't feel full yet. You know what I mean? We're yeah. gonna need some more. And <laughs> we should get some more. We should get some more. A so, good explanation oh for the uh, the full effect on those beers is that they're also highly carbonated. So that's going to... What did you say, Jeanette? What did you say? I said she was waving at me. Oh, she was you. waving at you. That's fine. <laughs> I don't care. Hey, that's for Jeanette. I'm just being friendly. So if you were to talk to Jeanette and say, hey, you should come because what else is there to experience for people like Jeanette there? Oh, well, we have a full menu. Uh, yes. Not just the burgers. Got a full menu. We also make almost all of our products, all of our offerings in-house, mostly with locally sourced ingredients. Um, the spent grain soft pretzels are also very sought after. Yes. Uh, we actually make our own flour out of the grain that we use in our beers and put those into the soft pretzels. Uh, we have a uh, full bar as well so if you like wine i'm gonna ask two questions okay why do you where do you live Jeanette? what area do you live in i live by the west roads okay by west roads mm -hmm. so to drive here is quite a jaunt a little bit or you can take an uber or, or yes absolutely why do you why do you choose blackstone it's kind of fun there's all kinds of new restaurants and bars that's what I love. It's an we emerging. Have, we don't have that by the West Roads. That's true. That's kind of true. I mean, when people think Blackstone, some people still don't know. They're not sure. You know what I mean? Why did you choose Blackstone to open a business? We saw what was going on with the development. And as we were thinking about what kind of market this could end up being with Crescent Moon already being established, we were like, this is perfect for a craft brewery to be in. Well, that's awesome. That's awesome. So I'm going to play a game with you guys here. We're going to play a little game uh, called React. I'm going to play, I'm going to say something, and you're going to say good or bad. I'm going to win. Immediately. 
you're gonna say good or bad there's no winning or losing <laughs> it's your opinion so are you ready here we go so we're going to uh, go with this all right ready so I'm gonna say something and you're gonna say good or bad scooters good good okay why are they good Easy mode of transportation to get up and down the street in a district like this. Uh, and it's kind of fun to ride. Awesome. And I was more thinking caffeine is great. Oh my God. I was, no, not scooters, coffee. I'm talking about the scooters on the road. <laughs> well, you didn't specify. Sorry. Oh my gosh, she's bringing a shot over. I have a 5.30 birthday party. <laughs> That's why she got you a small shot. So here we go. Next, next, next subject. Here we go. Restaurant, restaurant tax. Bummer. Bad. Right. Seriously, right? What, what's something we can do about that? Drink more caffeine. <laughs> <laughs> okay, here we go. Here we go. Ready? This has to be immediate. This has to be immediate. The current mayor. Good. Good. You guys are just copying each other. You guys are being politically correct. He's copying me. Okay, okay. Transportation in Omaha. Scooters. Good. Bad. Okay, why do you think about it? Why do you think bad? We need, we badly need mass transportation options, and the interstate is going to be like Denver if we don't hurry up and start a plan on that. Okay, I'm going to say something. You don't have to say good or bad now. I just want your reaction. I want your answer to this. There's nothing to do in Omaha. False. False. Tell me, tell me why. Tell me why. Have you been to the Blackstone? Absolutely, I've been to the Blackstone. Talk about it, Jeanette. This is the time to brag about the Blackstone. Tony, go ahead. We've got so much to do in Blackstone alone, but there's more than one neighborhood that is a flourishing neighborhood like this where you've got mom and pop shops, you've got authentic, uh, not cookie cutter businesses. Yes. We've got great sports teams we've got a great art scene we've got a great music scene there's so much to do in omaha if you look just open the paper and just look around a little bit i absolutely loathe people who say there's nothing to do in omaha i'm like you're boring so i i i want to say i appreciate jeanette thank you so much for for your ken comments at least you got to try all the farm house brewing company at least not all of it a small sampling and there's 10 percent available there 10 percent beer available everybody should go I, I think everybody should go tony any parting shots about what you want people to remember about farnham house got a large variety of beer and you got to come try that burger tell me about the burger one more time because don't don't just tell me it's a burger what is it and why okay it's a locally sourced beef from grass run farms uh prepared never frozen and that's a big deal never frozen is a big deal that's is. that's a big farm to freaking restaurant right there yep farm table i think uh freezing messes stuff up what else what else and the wings that we talked about again yes. locally sourced with the blue wings, cheese large with blue cheese yes you you won't go home with, on an empty stomach I will make sure that we include everything in the, in the uh, links there. Thank you so much to uh, our guest today. Tony, we appreciate you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you, Jeanette, for being on. We want to say thank you so much to our sponsor, the B4B Symposium. Make an impact November 7th at the Omaha Palazzo. Seven incredible speakers, including a keynote by Paul Jarrett, the CEO of Bulu Box. Seven speakers food trucks, networking, happy hour. Make sure you get your tickets ASAP. Again, B4B Symposium, November 7th. Thank you for listening today. And make sure that you tune in for the next week and the week after that. 